Hello everybody. This week we're going to be talking about mixed methods and working with mixed methods research designs. Mixed methods, uh, the text that we are going to be covering for this week are the research design, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods approaches, third edition, but we're just going to be looking at chapter 10 of Cresswell's text here. And also, um, I did post online a PowerPoint presentation that I found, which actually is quite handy, but it's not one of my own, it's from another university. Um, but I would recommend you go ahead and open that as well, just for a review. And finally, the article for this week is Arthur Hastings' article on his psychomantium research he's been doing, or he was doing before he passed, uh, at ITP Sophia. And the text is there on the left, the third edition and the blue version. Uh, the, also on the right, you see designing and conducting mixed methods research. This is a very handy text to have as well if you're going to be doing mixed method research. And it's also the text I plan to use for my mixed method uh, course that's going to be offered this summer. So for those of you who might be taking it or who might be considering doing mixed method research yourself, you might want to take that course. And this is the text that we'd be using, uh, the most up-to-date version of it anyway. All right, uh, the first textual overview of mixed method designs was in roughly 2003, so you see that this isn't a very old uh, discussion that we're having here. It's more of a recent uh, uh, establishment within the, the methods you know, literature. And that in 2003, that was the Handbook of Mixed Methods in the Social and Behavioral Sciences. However, mixed method designs have been around for quite a while. Um, we just haven't been calling them as such. Uh, some point back to Campbell and Fisk's uh, 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 study that their uh, text that they had written um, back in 1959, um, particularly for those within psychology. Um, that's what the point back to. But really, um, the, the putting the uh, process of putting together quantitative and qualitative research to better understand a phenomena uh, or a topic that you're studying has been around, the idea has been around for quite some time. The main strategies or models within mixed method research are the sequential mixed method uh, design or model. And in the sequential, the researcher seeks to elaborate on or expand on the findings of one method with another method. And that's actually from page 14. It's not within the uh, chapter that we're going to be reading, but I wanted to bring this in here. So you might start with quantitative, the Q-U-A-N, and then move into qualitative, or start with qualitative and then move into quantitative. Yeah, quantitative. So in that sense, it's sequential. One happens after the other. Then there's also concurrent mixed methods, which is the researcher merges quantitative and qualitative data. Um, and you're looking at doing those, uh, collecting those forms of data together. You might analyze them together or you might analyze them separately just depending on what you're doing. Uh, and you integrate that information uh, during the analysis and the interpretation. So in sequential, one's first and then the next one. In concurrent, they're both, you're collecting both sets of data together. And the third is called the transformative mixed methods, according to Cresswell, anyway. And in the transformative mixed methods, you are really using an overarching theoretical lens or umbrella, if you remember that term from uh, William Broad's text earlier in the quarter. Uh, it's an overarching theoretical lens which provides the framework for your study. So you might be coming from a particular, like a constructivist or an action research um, umbrella and within that um, you would be collecting multiple types of data to answer your questions about a particular topic. And um, sometimes the goal of this research is just a more in-depth understanding. At other times it is to create some sort of action in the world, um, you know, like for advocacy uh, purposes. I would like to say that I, I think this is particularly important for the interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary studies. Um, you might have a transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary perspective um, coming from different theoretical or, or ontological or epistemological perspectives that you're trying to mesh. And you might do that 
um, by using the, the transformative method that starts with the theoretical and then within that you collect data um, so that you can find out about your particular topic and make some sense of it. Research questions within mixed methods. It's going to be slightly different because uh, you're not dealing with just one type of uh, method. So one thing to think about is the order of the data collection. If it's sequential, then you might ask the first question, the question within the first set of data that you're collecting first, and then ask the um, second question second. Uh, so if you're doing a primarily quantitative, then focus on the quantitative question and then the qualitative question, or vice versa. If your order is such that it's concurrent, then you ask the questions based on the weight of importance, or um, if the quantitative, for example, if the quantitative is uh, heavily weighted, you start with the quantitative research hypothesis, and then you might uh, move into the qualitative, or if the qualitative is more heavily weighted, then you start with that. Um, but again, that's if it's concurrent. Uh, another thing to consider for research questions, is you, what you might do instead is just ask a specific mixed methods question. So start with an overarching way of framing the question that incorporates both the quantitative and qualitative and then breaking it down into its smaller, uh, more specific questions. In that, you would want to address in particular the uh, mixing of the data and how you are uh, going to be analyzing it and bringing it all together. You could additionally focus on the procedures or the content. So with mixed method strategies there are several important concepts and some uh, um, visual cues that I, I want to uh, let you in on. Uh, the important concepts when looking at mixed method research is the first one, again this is going to start to sound familiar because I'm, I'm going over it repetitively just in different ways. But the one important concept is timing. When are you going to collect the different um, data sets? Or when are you going to analyze them? Is it at the same time? Is it one after the other? Um, is one informing the other? Or uh, are they com completely separate? Uh, the other important concept is waiting. And what I mean by waiting is, or what Kerswell means by waiting, is what is the important piece? So for some mixed methods research, the quantitative is going to be weighted heavier because it might, you know, that might be due to the audience that you're speaking to or a particular type of um, ans answer you're trying to come up with. In others, the qualitative might be weighted more because you might really be going for more of a descriptive uh, type of outcome. The mixing of the two, I've already been talking about how it um, combines or when you start doing your analysis <coughs> or you're um, combining the findings, that's important to think about. And also your theory, you don't want to be engaging in um, uh, mixing different methods that are really dichotomous um, and are coming from completely different theoretical standpoints unless you specifically address why you're doing that. Uh, usually you want to choose some that are in some ways in alignment uh, ontologically, epistemologically, uh, teleologically, so that you're uh, um, really uh, focusing your mixed method research in a way that makes some sense. If it's not uh, in alignment, then uh, sometimes it's hard to really bring everything together at the end and make sense of the data that you do have. So a couple symbols that are important. The plus is generally uh, it indicates that you're looking at concurrent data co uh, collection, whereas the arrow means sequential data collection. Capitalization usually indicates the weight or the priority. QUAN stands for quantitative and QUAL qualitative. And you'll see down below the all caps QUAN slash QUAL. QUAN there is weighted heavily where the qual is less uh, heavily weighted. But what that means with a slash, or you might see this with boxes, uh, that means that the qualitative is embedded within a quantitative design. And it might be reversed. You might have QUAL in all caps and then slash quant. 
So now I'm going to go over very specific designs. Um, Cresswell goes over six, and so I'll stick with his six, and uh, there are other combinations, however. But uh, let's start with these six and see how far it gets us, and then um, obviously we're going to be talking about these online and uh, answering questions and whatnot in our online class. The first of these is the sequential explanatory design. Now, Cres Cresswell goes over three sequential first and then three concurrent designs. So this is the first of the sequential designs, and it's called the explanatory design. You start with a quantitative assessment, and then you move into qualitative. So you have the quant data collection, then the quant data analysis, the qual data collection and the qual data analysis, and then the interpretation of the entire analysis. And I see that my top line on the quant qual got off a little bit, but anyway, um, you get that you start with the quantitative and you analyze it. That informs the collection of the qualitative uh, data collection and the data analysis. Um, it happens right after the qual data collection, and then you uh, revisit everything and you do an interpretation of the entire study. So an example of this might be if you're studying significant life events uh, that people have during college. You might start with a quantitative piece that is 500 college students completing some sort of survey. And then you find out uh, what types of uh, life events they're having. You're doing the data analysis and that informs your, um, your qualitative uh, piece. So you might then go and uh, take uh, 30 exemplar students, uh, you choose them and you interview them about their experience that they are having and then that interpretation um, is done after all the um, data is collected and analyzed then you come back to the primary research question and say okay well what do I now know having um, surveyed 500 students and interviewed these 30 exemplar students what do I know about these uh, significant life events that happened during college so the sequential exploratory design is the second one that Creswell covers now notice it's virtually identical to the first one except for the qualitative and quantitative pieces are switched so you start with the qualitative and then you move to the quantitative so you do your qualitative data collection your qualitative data analysis and then you move into your quantitative data collection your quantitative data analysis and finally an interpretation of the entire analysis and uh, revisiting of the main research question the overarching research question so as an example we might say um, let's say studying significant life events again during college this time we'll start with a qualitative piece we might interview 30 college students and in interviewing them we find out what the different pieces are that we might want to um, survey or, or measure and so from there we initiate a quantitative analysis after the qualitative is done and we do a qualitative analysis quantitative analysis of 500 students we give them a survey and get the results and then um, figure out what those results mean and after that then we do the interpretation of the entire analysis we um, look at w what answers we have then for the entire um, research question the overarching question then there's the sequential transformative designs transformative designs are theory theory driven so in this we have each box uh, denotes one particular study so you have on the top box a qualitative um, study that is uh, you initiate the qualitative research first and then you move into the quantitative but you start really the whole study is really within a particular theoretical or uh, overview or orientation or umbrella and the bottom one again sequential transformative you have the theory as the the main part but you start with the quant and move into the qual and I'm going to skip um, uh, examples on those now moving into the concurrent designs the first one that Cresswell talks about is the concurrent triangulation design and this is uh, he says is the most common that you see and what the ha what this particular research is is you have the quantitative and the qualitative being collected at the same time it's concurrent that's you got the plus in between there the two boxes and you have the analysis happening at the same time 
the collection and the analysis, and you compare the results between the two. And that gives you a greater understanding of the phenomena at hand. Uh, in my article, if you remember, I used the word triangulation. I was collecting a lot of different pieces of data at the same time, and I talk about that as the different pieces of data all pointing at the phenomena of what was happening during the uh, sessions that I was leading for the participants. All right. So an example here is a desire to know more about the use of expressive arts within therapy. Uh, say that that's our topic. So we simultaneously collect survey data from 500 counselors in private practice regarding their use of expressive arts. Uh, for example, how often and what issues they use it with. And at the same time, we recruit 15 counselors to interview about their use of expressive arts to find out more uh, regarding the, the um, rich description, the um, uh, specifics about how they use it within their own practice. Notice that the quantitative and qualitative are weighted equally and once I you have the information the data from the 500 counselors and the data from the 15 counselors the quantitative and the qualitative then you compare the results and see what you have so the second concurrent design is the concurrent embedded design now the boxes mean that um, the, the denotes the study. So the first box on the left, you have a quantitative study with a qualitative piece that's embedded within the larger quantitative study. And you analyze the findings as you're um, collecting that data at the same time. Now the one on the right is you have a qualitative study and within that qualitative study you have a smaller quantitative piece. And then you analyze the findings there. So an example, we'll just use one of these um, on the quantitative piece. You might have an experiment on uh, meditation with sixth graders. Let's go back to a prior uh, week when we were talking about meditation with grade school students. So we have meditation with sixth graders to help increase their focus. But you want to have that be your quant piece. So that denotes that your primary um, study is going to be quantitative. And it's all in caps. It should be Q-U-A-N. I put a T in there. Um, so to do that, you might have um, uh, you know randomization. Uh, it could be quasi-experimental. You just take two classes, but if it's a true experiment, you'd randomize them to two different um, groups and um, have them you know one group engage in meditation, the other not. Uh, do some sort of focus um, pre-test, post-test assessment, and see if there was some sort of outcome. Now, for the qualitative piece, you might have um, might interview several of the students to find out what it was like for them to be in the meditation group, the treatment group. So that's just an example. So finally, the sixth and uh, sixth design, the third of the concurrent designs that Cresswell covers, is the concurrent transformative design. This design, again, you have the boxes, the box indicating the separate study. On the left there, you have a quan and qual uh, study where they're uh, equally weighted, so it's a triangulation type of study. And um, the primary thing, though, is that you are starting with an overarching theory. And within that theory, you have the collection of quantitative and qualitative data. On the right, you have more of an embedded design. So you start with the overarching theory, but you have a primarily quantitative or a primarily qualitative study. And within that, you have the other version of data. So in this case, you have a primarily quantitative study, and you have qualitative um, data embedded within that. And it's through the collection of those two together um, in an embedded way that you're trying to uh, assess or answer or provide uh, new information on um, the topic at hand within a particular overarching theory. Or starting with that overarching theory as your base. All right, again, for the article review, we're going to be looking at Arthur Hastings' uh, research, which he did through the William James Center at ITP Sophia. Um, this is psychomantium research, for those of you who don't know what a psychomantium is. And I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't, because most people don't. 
Uh, Psychomantium is essentially a black, uh, dark room that is uh, created in a particular way so that no light gets in. You have somebody sit in the room, um, often with a mirror at a slant so the person can't see themselves, and they gaze into the mirror. Um, I think, believe they have a small red light on, in the seat behind the individual just so they can see slightly. Uh, and then they sit there and, and gaze at the mirror for a half hour to an hour, uh, depending on the procedures, and see what happens. So uh, some very interesting things can happen when, when people engage this way. It's kind of like mirror gazing, you know, or scrying or different types of things. So when reviewing this article, um, please use the analysis worksheet. Also, please specify what type of mixed method this is if it is a mixed method, and what the various components are. So in other words, what is the quantitative piece, what's the qualitative piece. Also, how were the results combined um, in the end? How were they synthesized and brought uh, into a greater meaning about the topic? All right. Now for our discussion this week, let's talk about what the strengths and weaknesses what are the strengths and weaknesses of the mixed method designs you can pick a couple designs or talk about them in more general terms secondarily if you were to use mixed method research what topic would you choose and how would you construct a study using mixed method research be specific as to what are the qualitative and quantitative pieces what are the variables etc etc and finally, I always ask and leave space for your questions. Please uh, add any questions that you had when you were going through the texts, and we'll discuss those in the, in the course. All right, hope you're having a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.